Um, and we went from um, alternating current, high voltage Frankenstein stuff, uh, and we found out that really wasn't where it was at because the body is electrical. And there's a material part of the body, but there's also, from the physical part, the material part that you see, we found out that really is not where it's at. That's going to follow the space and the field. The field is really where all the information is. Every bit of information that has ever happened to you is out here in the field. Outside of our skin? Outside of our skin, okay. out here, right. And we communicate from the space inside down at the DNA level. Inside the DNA is a tiny little space called the centriole. And the centriole is a quantum. And when we think of quantum, you know, that name's bantered around a lot. But to think of the quantum in very simple terms is the quantum is everything and everywhere. If you think of the quantum, think of not only outer space, but also inner space. And we communicate from that inner space of where we are constantly to that outer space. The centriole inside the DNA is what gives the orders to everything. The DNA is just the bit of information, but the real energy center and what we're really about is this little tiny bit of quantum that is inside of us. And if we could go down to that level and look inside, the amazing thing is that it would look just like outer space. So we have like this space inside that is like the outside of what we see when we look up at the stars, sort of. And we have all these particles that we can't see. You know, we look at the electron, the proton, and all these kind of things spinning around the nucleus. But the, the part that we don't see, the invisible world, this scalar energetic world also has particles. And they talk about the, the various particles um, in, in quantum physics, the, the quarks and, and uh, those sort of particles as being tachyons and whatever, traveling at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light so that we can't see them and we don't know where they go to and they're so fast and they disappear. And that's not really it because those particles are actually the particles of this no space, of this space, this quantum, just like the electron and proton are part of the atom, a part of the atomic part. If we would take the atom and blow it up to the size of a baseball field, we would see that the nucleus of that atom would only be the baseball in that field. And the electrons and protons would only be the size of gnats. And the field is the space. So we're working with this tiny bit of matter that you see here. That's only a tiny bit of what we really are. And what we actually are is this huge amount of space. So when I look at you, I'm not seeing Ray, Ray. We should re be looking way out from Ray because you're two beings. You're the being that we see that's kind of just a spacesuit the real being is using to walk around in for a few years to learn, to grow, to experience, to choose, make choices, to um, change in resonance to a more unlimited point. And see, there's no real good or bad. It's just the choices that you make are either going to limit that resonance or unlimit that resonance so that you can grow. And our whole point of being here is to grow in resonance, to become more of an unlimited being, to raise ourselves higher with more breadth and depth so that we, in that resonance change, we attain a higher spiritual state. So it's all tied together. Mind, body, spirit is all tied together in one. I'm not talking about any religious dogma here. This just is. So when I look at Ray, I see two beings. The physical part, the spacesuit that he's walking around in, but also 
the incredible part of what he really is, this great spiritual being that we don't see, that holds all the information, all the keys to life, past, future, time is not relevant, that is all-knowing, plugged into the quantum. Now, if we think of ourselves in that way, it changes everything. Because if we think of ourselves in that way, we are totally unlimited beings. And if we understand that, we understand how we are a part of God and how we fit into the whole quantum. If you change one grain of sand on the beach, do you change the whole beach? In fact, you do. You do change the beach because that one grain of sand moves everything. And so our choices in life change everything out into the universe. We have no idea what that small one choice will do and ripple out even into other dimensions because we are timeless, ageless entities. That second entity that we don't see that goes on after this thing is laying in a box. The spacesuit is laid away in a parking space, done, deal, and that energy, that spirit goes on. Always was, always will be, and always working toward a higher, more unlimited breadth and width and height in spiritual existence called resonance. So knowing that and understanding that became a very founding factor in our technology because all of our technology is based on energy and information. When we change the energy and the information and give that energy and information to the body, we change everything. We can program the quantum because of the unlimited spirit that we are, we can change the quantum, program the quantum to be anything and do anything that we want. We just have to know that we're plugged in, see it very clearly, and then let it go. It's not like something you have to really work on. Oh, go into a state and do all this. Kind. You don't have to do any of that. Just know that you are part of everything and that when you put the idea out there, as it goes out into space, into the quantum, that idea becomes information that you send on the waveform or coming from your brain, because the brain is electrical, out into space to happen at some later date. We don't know when because time is not relevant. Like psychics, you go to them, they tell you different times. They're not always right. Why? Because time is not relative in this realm. You can't really pin it on any time but will happen. Don't try to figure out how it's going to happen because if you do that, you're going to mess it all up. Let the quantum take care of that because sometimes it's a great surprise how it all develops and how it all happens. Just know that it will happen and it will happen. Many of you can think of that as a child. Maybe you had ideas and maybe you wanted to do things or even now, you know, you think of something and you really want it and you really want it and then suddenly it's happening in, in some strange evolved way and you think, wow, that is cool. How did that happen? It happened because of this consciousness that you used to program the quantum. So educating people in this is a very important part of what we are. It has to be, of course, sometimes in a sneaky way because they don't always understand the depth of what it really is. 